Hey guys, and welcome to my very first monthly roundup of 2018. Now, if you saw my last video, then you know that I'm no longer doing monthly uh, reading wrap-ups, and instead I'm going to be doing more recent reads style videos when I just talk about books whenever I have a good stack of them. However, because I really like having kind of a video marker between one month and the next, I'm going to be doing these roundup videos where I kind of talk about the kind of content that I've been making, talk about what I've been doing, what I've been enjoying, uh, and things like that. That, whatever's been on my mind. I do have a list of things here that I would like to talk about, but honestly, I'm not sure how these videos are going to go or if there's going to be any kind of set format, so let's just jump into it and see what happens. Let's go ahead and start off with the content that I produced in January, which, um, because it was the beginning of the year, obviously uh, was pretty standard. By that, I mean I put up a video on my 2018 reading and channel goals, and I did a video on my top reads of 2017. I say top reads because I included both favorites and runners-up in that video. I also put up a video talking about some of my most anticipated 2018 releases, this time with a focus on Asian women, and I did that video in collaboration with April Magazine. Honestly, I was really nervous to put that video up. It's the first time I've ever um, done a sponsored video, but I think it all tied in really naturally, and you guys seem to really like the books that I talked about and seems to have never heard of some of them before, which is always the goal. So uh, yeah, I'm glad it went over well, and thank you guys for watching it. And then of course, because it was the 21st roundabout of books, I had a TBR and wrap-up for the readathon. When it comes to blog content in the month of January, I put up a post talking about my blogging confusion, um, which was basically me saying, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with the blog in 2018. The other post I put up in January was a book review of Social Ecology by Daniel Stokels, which I was supposed to have reviewed last year and I'm super, super far behind on, but at least the review is finally up and I would highly encourage you guys to go check it out. Never fear, links to everything I mention will be down in the description below. Aside from creating that content in January, I didn't actually do much. Uh, I didn't go on any trips or start any wild new projects, but it was kind of a relaxing reset month, which I think I really needed, especially after Vlogmas. I guess the one new thing that I did start in January was start to develop a mindfulness practice. One of my goals for the new year was to get into a more habitual mindfulness practice. Um, in the past, I would meditate or journal or um, you know, do kind of re relaxation exercises when I was already in this state of anxiety. And this year I want to kind of do the groundwork so that I'm always feeling less wound up. So far my mindfulness practice consists of two things. Number one, in the morning I do kind of prompted uh, stream of consciousness journaling, and then in the evenings I've been doing meditation. The book I'm using in the mornings to prompt my journaling is Meditation for People Who Worry by Anne Wilson Schaefe. Now this is um, a relatively old book. I believe this was published in the 90s, so some of the the discussions do feel a bit dated. Basically, she gives you a little quote, a topic, and a bit of a reflection or discussion of that topic. And what I've been doing is taking this little bold bit at the end here, writing it down in a journal, and then just stream of consciousness reacting to that prompt and so far I'm really liking the results. Obviously I will keep you guys updated as I continue to do this throughout the year, but so far I can just say that it's a really nice way to ease into the day. Uh, normally I would just kind of get up and then be frantically late, but this way I'm actually forcing myself to get up slightly earlier so that I have time to do my journaling in the morning. And uh, yeah, I. For, for that alone, I'm really enjoying it. And then when it comes to evening meditation, I've been using the app 10% Happier to kind of get me going on this whole meditation journey. Yes, the app 10% Happier is tied to Dan Harris's book, 10% Happier. He's developed it with a bunch of different meditation specialists, and I can honestly say that I think using this app will give me um, it's made me more inclined to stick to meditation than any other thing I've tried in the past. What I like about this app compared to say something like Headspace is that they don't just give you guided meditations, but they actually have little video lessons before each meditation. They talk about the theories behind things, they talk about the benefits, they um, problem solve uh, potential issues you could run into, and so far I've just found that it really works for me. I will again keep you guys up to date on how I'm using this, but so far I'm just kind of coming home in the evenings and sitting down to do like a 10 or 15 meditation, 10 or 15 minute meditation through the app. I really like doing this after work because typically what was happening before was that I was coming home and because driving tends to make me slightly anxious, I was just like super revved up and 
overly animated and so I find that doing the meditation right when I get home is just a really great way to kind of relax from any stress that I've brought home from work and uh, you know any road rage. Let's see what else I have written down. Oh YouTube favorites. I'm not actually gonna mention any booktubers here because in the next couple of weeks I will be putting up a new booktuber shoutouts video to highlight some smaller creators. Um, you know I think that's a great thing to do anytime, but especially because of the new YouTube partner changes, um, I wanted to make kind of a whole separate video on that. However, I do have two uh, YouTube channels that I wanted to mention, the first of which is Lavender. Lavender is run by a lovely, lovely young woman named um, Eileen, and she makes personal development videos, I guess. She talks a lot about productivity, minimalism, um, kind of creating your ideal life and and what you can do to kind of give yourself the space to accomplish what you want. And I just find her videos so very calming. The other channel I've really been loving kind of serves as a source of food inspiration and that is the channel Caitlin Shoemaker, which was formerly from my bowl. Caitlin is a vegan YouTuber and recipe developer and she does these super Super beautiful looking uh, recipe videos. Honestly, it feels a little weird to tell you guys that I have been obsessed with a vegan YouTube channel because I am very much not a vegan and in fact am very committed to eating my animal products. However, I love Caitlin's videos for a couple of reasons. Number one, the food inspo is off the wall. Did I really just say food inspo is off the wall? Oh gosh, okay. Well, I guess that's going in. Seriously, especially if you're trying to eat more fruits and vegetables this year and trying to be a little bit healthier, I think you cannot go wrong watching one of her videos. You will just feel inspired to go into your kitchen and cook. The second reason I really like Caitlin's channel is that she just has a really, um, level-headed approach to health in general. Basically, I love her channel, and even if you're not vegan, I would highly recommend you check her out. I also got really into podcasts again this January. I kind of go through phases where I'm either listening to audiobooks or I'm listening to podcasts. I don't really do both at the same time. There are two podcasts I wanted to mention, uh, first of which is um, Up First by NPR. Now, this is a news podcast, and if you, like me, were um, getting a little bit too deep into the news last year and you're looking for a way to to stay informed yet you know, at a distance at the same time, I think you should check this one out. Basically, Up First is a 12 to 15 minute podcast um, that they put up first thing in the morning and it just kind of goes through the most important stories of the day. The other podcast I've really been enjoying is called Rough Translation and this one is also from NPR. The basic concept behind Rough Translation is taking a look at different themes or topics that we might be talking about here in the US and then seeing how those translate elsewhere in the world. So for example, I just listened to an episode about World Yoga Day and how here in the US it was an excuse for a bunch of people to come together and do yoga in Times Square and be like, look how fit and healthy I'm being. Whereas in India, it was actually more of a Muslim versus Hindu uh, conflict, uh, which was just incredibly fascinating and uh, not like anything I've ever thought about before. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you probably know what TV show I have been obsessed with um, over the past couple of months because I have not stopped tweeting about it. Sorry about that, but you know, I love it and I want it to get renewed and that is NBC's The Brave. The Brave follows a special ops team that works for the Defense Intelligence Agency or the DIA um, and they kind of go into situations when they are the last resort, when they need super stealthy operators, when they need people to make the impossible happen and honestly, I think this is the best show that NBC has come up with in a very, very long time. First of all, each of the characters is so very multi-dimensional. Nobody is a caricature of a tough guy or a badass girl. They feel very real and very layered and if they do get further seasons, I think we could see some phenomenal character development on top of the amazing character development that we've already gotten. I also really like that the show is um, over the top enough that it gets you sitting on the edge of your seat biting your nails, but it's not so over the top that it's completely unrealistic. This show is also a fan fiction writer's dream, but anyways, if you haven't seen The Brave yet, I would highly recommend you go see it. There's just 13 episodes in their first season. Um, they've had to be cut short because of the Olympics, but um, fingers crossed that they get renewed for a second season because the last episode Ah. Also in January, I kind of rediscovered an old favorite, and that would be the CBS show Numbers. Now, back in the day, back when I was in high school, this was the only show that I actually watched religiously. Like, this was the only show when I actually knew when it was on TV, because Netflix wasn't really a thing back then. If you've never heard of Numbers, it was a CBS crime show that 
uh, was set in LA and followed two brothers. One was an FBI agent and the other was a math genius and math professor. Basically the brothers come together to solve the FBI's toughest crimes and uh, they do so along with a fantastic cast of supporting characters. As a high school student I initially started watching Numbers because I was struggling through conceptual physics and was just having a really hard time getting interested in the subject and so I really liked seeing math and science applicable to my favorite kind of TV show, which was crime television. Now that I'm older and more aware of story arc and character development and all that, I have to say I'm totally appreciating the show for a completely different reason. Yes, the show does have its moments where you're like, okay, that is completely improbable and a bit over the top and what am I watching? But what I really love about the show is that it has my favorite thing ever, which is a fantastic cast of characters. And I'm really impressed with the dialogue and the use of character backstory here. Um, I didn't realize how subtly they kind of slipped people's backstories into each episode. Basically there are different episodes where um, there is kind of a revelation about one character or another but they don't make it the, the linchpin of the entire episode if that makes sense and uh, yeah I don't know I'm rambling but I, I really love the show and I'm glad that they put it all up on Amazon Prime. The last thing I wanted to mention was the only movie that I watched in January and that was Zero Dark 30. Now if this was a favorites video I would definitely not be mentioning this movie um, because while I didn't hate it, it definitely is not a favorite. Zero Dark Thirty was originally released in 2012 and was a Catherine Bigelow project which is really what drew me to seeing it in the first place. I absolutely love her other film um, Hurt Locker. It's one of my favorite movies of all time and so I had um, I guess relatively high hopes for this one. I think the thing that really threw me off about Zero Dark Thirty is that it doesn't really feel like a movie and I'm gonna try and explain what I mean by that right now. It feels almost like a documentary chronicling the very long process of locating Bin Laden, putting eyes on him, and then ultimately taking him out. It's a very long movie and it's a long movie where you feel the length of it while you're watching. In retrospect that might have actually been um, Catherine Bigelow's intention because you do get the sense that oh gosh this was a really long really painstaking drawn out journey. So would I go back and rewatch the film? Probably not but my big takeaway from it was that I love Jessica Chastain. Seriously she carries the entire movie and she does amazing things with a character that really emotes very little. Her character is very bottled up, is very singularly focused and if you've seen the film that last scene, I mean, wow. I know this isn't a ringing review and I don't expect you all to go run out and see the movie um, after hearing me talk about it, but if you are interested in watching, just know that the first like 30 minutes are pretty uh, hard to watch, hard to stomach um, in regards to torture scenes and things like that. So just keep that in mind uh, before you go and watch this one for yourselves. So that was my January in a nutshell and I feel like this is going to be a really long video because I'm looking at my camera and I have like 40 minutes worth of footage here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a fantastic January as well and I hope you enjoyed this new format of video. Hopefully in the future they won't be quite as rambly and maybe I'll just focus in on one or two things because that, that, that much footage is kind of ridiculous. Anyways, thank you guys again for watching. Um, have a fantastic day wherever you are and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.